Welcome to Exploring with D-Rob. Let's go. Back up in the gorge this morning. Going to go check out a few more of the short hikes. Going to start out today at the Osborne Bend Trailhead, located at the Manifee Wolf County line next to the concrete bridge uh, to get to the Osborne Bend Trailhead parking. You can either come around through Nata Tunnel. Follow 77 around to 715, then 715 on around to Osborne Bend Trailhead. Or you can come in like I am today. Uh, come out and come in by Skybridge Station, turn on 715, and follow it around past Skybridge down the hill to the concrete bridge across and to the Osborne Bend Trailhead parking. Starting at the Osborne Bend Trailhead today. I'm going to check out four or five arches. Uh, the first one we're going to check out is Moonshiner's Arch. Uh, to access Moonshiner's Arch, you can come in from above or below it. If you come in from below it, cut down right here along the Douglas Trail. You'll follow around approximately half a mile. You'll see it up on your left going to come in from above so I'm going to follow the Osborne Bend Trail for a few tenths of a mile where we'll cut off onto a user trail. Uh, currently here at the little kiosk at the trailhead they have maps in the map box oftentimes it's empty but as of right now they have some. You unfold this Gives you a full map of the gorge. A little rain in the area last night, so my little friend's out this morning. At just over a tenth of a mile, we come to this trail junction here. Osborne Bend keeps going straight. You'll see a trail cuts downhill to the right. This will take us down to Moonshiner's Arch. As you come downhill and the trail starts to flatten out, you'll also come to Big Spiderweb. Come out into an opening. This is pretty close to on top of Moonshiner's Arch. On campsite, as you can see, gets a little traffic. The trail you want to take is over here just to the left. Bring us in on the top side of Moonshiner's Arch. As you come over, There'll be a couple user trails. One cuts over to the left here. Uh, another keeps going straight to get down to Moonshiner's Arch. You're gonna go downhill to your right here. It's actually a little bit of a drainage here. So on a day like today, it's nice and muddy. Another user trail to the left. You're gonna keep going to the right here. 
and Moonshiner's Arch starts to come into view. Here you have Moonshiner's Arch. Then if we go straight over here, kind of over on top of the arch, there's a skylight you can look down through. Just be extremely careful not to fall in. From parking, coming in to the upper side of Moonshiners this way, is right at a quarter of a mile. As you work your way down inside Moonshiner's Arch, just be careful because this is a limestone arch. Limestone rock does not give the traction that sandstone does. Especially if it's wet, limestone can be very slick. If you come over to the left side here, you can look back up through the skylight. This is where we just went on top of just a second and look down through. Pretty neat little feature in this arch. Come over to the right side, get a good look at both openings of the arch. See just how massive this uh, probably once collapsed cave is. Yeah, if you were going on to Eagle Point Buttress to connect back with the Douglas Trail, you'd just follow through the large opening of the arch back down towards the river. The light looks pretty good this morning, so I think I'll get my camera out and see if I can get a few decent images while I'm here. come in from the Douglas Trail. This is the view you get as you come up to Moonshiner's Arch. I'm gonna go check out a couple more arches in the area. So I'm gonna cut up through here where we came in, work our way back around to the Osborne Bend. Most of the time, videos don't get watched through the completion. Uh, so I started with the best arch on this hike first. The next three are smaller arches, but definitely worth seeing. If you get to noticing that this uh, trail is a little thicker, the trails are sometimes a little less maintained. This is in the Clifty Wilderness, so. It's a little more of a wilder area. At a little over three tenths of a mile from parking, the trail goes in under this cliff line here trail starts to go a little more uphill. This is when you know you're starting to get close to the next two arches we're going to see. Unicorn Arch and Osborne Bend Arch. Osborne Bend Arch is going to be the furthest point we're going to go to. So I'm going to start there and we'll work our way back to the other arches. The majority of the year the Osborne Bend Trail has uh, several muddy sections. So this is probably not a trail you're gonna to wanna to wear those brand new J's on. And just a fuzz over a half a mile from Trailhead Parking. 
Osmond Ben will come through a little slot like area there in the trail. He'll come up just past that. There'll be a bend in the trail as it continues uphill. Right, that bend to the right. You'll notice there's a user trail goes down the hill. You're gonna take this user trail. This is where we're gonna cut down to Osborne Bend Arch. As you work your way down, you'll begin to flatten out and you'll come up on this pretty nice size campsite. Uh, while it is a nice size campsite, barely out of sight from the trail, it is uh, technically an illegal campsite because it's less than 300 feet from the trail. Uh, for some folks that don't know how far 300 feet is, that's the length of a football field. So if you ever set up camp and you're within a stone's throw from the trail, good chance you're in an illegal campsite. As you come past the campsite, you'll come out to this, you know, this uh, rocky area. Step down just below the rock. You make a use your trail, keeps going straight. And then as you come around through some roto, just to your right, you have Osborne Bend Arch. This point you can crawl through and under the arch working your way back down to the trail or you can backtrack up the way you came down to the campsite and work your way back down to the left of the trail as you make your way back down to the trail on the way up you may have noticed walking past this long exposed stretch of rock on top of that rock uh, just a little ways out of sight there is where the large campsite is there's also a faint user trail coming down right here from the end of that exposed rock. That's uh, the way you can come back down from Osborne Bend Arch. Once you're back on the Osborne Bend, we're going to work our way back down the trail, uh, roughly a tenth of a mile or so. Check out Unicorn Arch. At just a touch over four tenths of a mile from the trailhead parking, you'll come uphill. You'll start to see several deadfalls here in the area. You'll see this large boulder here. A couple small trees growing on top of it. The rock shelter just above this is where we're gonna go check out Unicorn Arch. little slick and muddy actually kind of surprised i didn't fall coming up through there here is unicorn arch After you check out Unicorn Arch, just work your way back down the small user trail. Working your way back downhill, back towards parking. Next arch we're gonna go check out, Trapdoor Arch. patch of striped wintergreen mixed in a bunch of ground cedar. The 
striped wintergreen is slowly starting to bloom. As we work our way back down the trail towards parking, you'll see this trail cuts to the left. You probably recognize it from earlier. That's where we cut down the Moonshiner's Arch. Then we continue back towards parking. From parking, this is roughly one tenth of a mile. You'll see this user trail cut up to the right. You'll see this large boulder here to the left. We'll follow this user trail uphill. We're gonna work our way towards Trapdoor Arch. Again, follow this user trail up. You'll come to a small campsite here just above this large boulder. Uh, as you can see, the trail is right there. Definitely not uh, 300 feet. So this is an illegal campsite. And if you look just down the hill to the left, you'll see another campsite. Nice little campsite, but also illegal. All right, from this campsite, if you look up the hill, you can see the cliff line. We're gonna work our way up towards the cliff line and around to the right. Follow along the cliff line around until you reach Trapdoor Arch. Not positive, but just judging by how worn this user trail is, I'm gonna guess there's some climbing routes here as well. When you come to the gorge, be sure to enjoy the area while you're here. But do everyone a favor, unlike the 513, leave your spray paint at home for us. Thanks. As you work your way around, in the open woods just below the cliff line, and come around to yet another campsite. This one as well. There's the trail. Uh, while this one is just a little further away from the trail, still not 300 feet. Also an illegal campsite. As you walk through and past the campsite, follow your way on over, you'll see a large patch of ferns to the left. Way over a couple of deadfall here. As you look uphill, you'll see a patch of rhododendron here to the left. Uh, another small patch of rhododendron there to the right. And up there where you can see the sun shining against the cliff line, that's where we're going to go, and that's where we'll find Trapdoor Arch. As you work up to the cliff line, just above the patch of ferns, cliff line comes into view. If you look up, you can see Trapdoor Arch. Trapdoor Arch is going to be our last stop from the Osborne Bend Trailhead. From Trapdoor Arch, you just want to follow back down the way we came, meet up with Osborne Bend, follow the Osborne Bend back down to Trailhead Parking about a tenth of a mile. Let's get on out here and go check out our next stop. While all of today's uh, features are relatively close to a trail, they are technically all off trail, even the ones that have user trails to them. That's still considered off trail. Uh, Trapdoor Arch is pretty much completely off trail. So if any of these are out of your comfort zone, you, know, you don't have a good sense of direction or are not able to use GPS coordinates very well, uh, I suggest uh, probably skipping it. Maybe even Osborne Bend Arch. As 
as I was working my way back down through these ferns, I almost stepped on one of my little buddies. Round trip, uh, all four arches, counting my blundering around and taking some video and some uh, images. Uh, 1.7 miles round trip. So if you hit all of them, blunder around, enjoy the area a little bit, still coming away under two miles. head up 715 back into Wolf County uh, running a little short on time I'm gonna do one more stop I'm gonna go check out Castle Arch you know your limits and abilities better than I do so uh, any of this off trail stuff that I share just use your best judgment if you don't feel comfortable doing it just go ahead and skip by it between Osborne Bend parking and Sky Bridge. There are three roadside parking areas labeled with the brown peas. Uh, this uh, lower parking for Castle Arch is the middle of the three. I'm going to work my way down to Swift Camp Creek, find a shallow spot to cross. Uh, you do have to cross the creek regardless of which way you go to Castle Arch. So on a day that there's been a lot of heavy rain, uh, Castle Arch may not be a good option. From either of the two parking areas for Castle Arch, you can follow user trails down to the creek. This is this particular crossing. A little shallow area here. A little deeper area there, close to that big boulder. Possibly a decent little swimming hole if you're looking to take a swim. Uh, if you're having any trouble uh, with your pants staying up, have a black belt laying here just in case you need it. From either of the parking areas, uh, you're going to want to work your way down to the creek, work your way across the creek, and pretty much as soon as you get across the creek from either parking area, You'll be able to make user trails out that start up the hill and they'll follow up towards Castle Arch. Ran off and forgot my seal skins. Would have made this a lot easier. Would have made for dry feet uh, after a little bit of rain yesterday. Uh, regardless, either way I go here, I'm gonna get my feet wet, so here we go. As I mentioned, after you cross across Swift Camp Creek, Work your way up the bank, you can pick up a faint user trail headed uphill. About halfway up the hill, spotted another one of my little orange friends hiding out under some of the weeds. Uh, just a reminder, Castle Arch, another one completely off trail. If you're not comfortable with uh, using GPS coordinates or uh, have a very good sense of direction, so hike's probably not for you. While this is a short hike, I'll also throw in that it is uh, somewhat strenuous. As soon as you get across Swift Camp Creek, the trail's pretty much all uphill until you reach the arch. As you work your way up the hill, you start coming into some of the lower cliff line. Got some really nice color. If you look up over here, See some nice banding as well. As you work your way up the last section of the user trail up to the cliff line, if you look just to the right, you see Castle Arch. Kind of unexpected to see this little trail friend here up here sunning in the sand. Work your way up past a couple little saplings and you get a good look through Castle Arch. This particular view, in my opinion, you kind of get the outline of the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. 
if you come up from the first parking area down from Sky Bridge, you'd work your way up the hill to the cliff line. Once you got to the cliff line, you'd work your way around towards the ridge end, out here where the arch is. You'd come around under that overhang there, work your way around, and this would be your approach to Castle Arch. For those who have made it this far in the video, as a little added bonus, I'm gonna take you and show you the Castle Arch Overlook. It's up on top of where the arch is. From the side I came up on, you wanna come through the arch, work your way down the opposite side. We're gonna work our way right around through here, around the cliff line, up the ridge in, up to the Castle Arch Overlook. Let's go check it out. There's enough traffic around through here make out a user trail. Follow your way around the cliff line. That's pretty much all you're doing. Nothing is really exposed until you get up on top. Once you reach around this point, I'm gonna work up through this split right here. And up on top right there for the overlook. Work your way up through the split there. Follow the rock line up to the left. Come up to another little split. And work your way up to the left right here. Not as intimidating once you get up here. You realize there's a little grooves in the rocks pretty much makes for steps to get up through here we'll look back to the right across towards where the top of the arch is we'll come up work your way over towards the edge not getting too close get you get over here opens on up to one of the better overlooks in the gorge You look kind of over to the right here. This is the overlook off of Sky Bridge Parking. Then, if you step over to the right just a little bit, look back up towards Osborne Bend where we came from. I'm gonna zoom in as far as I can here. Right there, you can see a little hole looks like in the rock. That's Eagle's Nest. We're looking at Eagle Point Buttress. Taking a few minutes to enjoy the overlook. Got some sky interest. Looks really nice out today. I think I'll get the cannon out and see if I can come away with a few images before heading back out. If they turn out any good, well, here they are. way back down now uh, head back down to castle arch try to get a few images from there before uh, backtracking down to swift camp creek and back to the trail the scene's a little contrasty between the shade and the bright sky but if it came with any good images here they are
spent a little more time than I intended at uh, Castle Arch and the Overlook. Got a little carried away with photography, whatnot. Uh, probably ain't gonna do much video on the way back down. Just gonna backtrack the way I came. Uh, back down the parking. As I mentioned on the way up, you can make out a faint user path all the way up to Castle Arch. Here's a particular section of the trail where it gets a little harder to follow, but you can still make it out. All these ferns are overlapping it. Just follow right across through here. And continue to work back down to parking. Made it back down to Swift Camp Creek. Just gotta ease up the bank here, back to the truck. Uh, gonna go ahead and sign the video off here. Uh, out and back to Castle Arch. Uh, either route you wanna take is just over nine tenths of a mile. So it's a short hike, but there's a lot of elevation gain on the way up. So it's a little bit of a workout to get there, but it works worth the reward. Uh, hope you enjoyed today's adventures. If you would, help me with the YouTube algorithm. Give me that like. Uh, subscribe if you enjoy the content on my channel. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching.